Welcome to GR86 Performance. Today we're going to be installing an oil catch can by Mishimoto designed for the FA24 engine on the GR86. Let's go ahead and get all these parts out so you can see what you get in the box and make sure that you have everything before you begin. First thing is going to be the bracket itself. It's made out of steel, good quality part. You also have your two valves, the in and out. They both have the O-rings on them as well so that makes it sealed and leak free. You also get the oil catch can itself, obviously. This is a pretty hefty part, all of metal, no plastic on it. It feels like it's gonna last a very long time. You get two preformed hoses. You also get a small baggie with four of the hose clamps that you're gonna need. They appear to be stainless steel, nice quality parts. As far as the oil catch can itself, take a quick peek here on the inside for you. You're gonna get a small reservoir on the bottom, as well as a baffling plate and a small, what looks like to be a bronze filter, if I'm not mistaken, just by the look of it. Looks to be good quality parts. It's all metal, no plastic, no garbage here. It's gonna last a long time for you. Let's go ahead and get this installed. First things first, your little engine cover. You're gonna go ahead and remove this. There's four little clips. You just pull vertically straight up on it and set it off to the side. Gonna need a 12 millimeter socket to remove a nut and a bolt on the driver's side right there no problem just remove those two after you get them loose you can go ahead and just zip them off with a tool you're going to grab your bracket that's going to hold the catch can it installs right there with those two little spots you're going to do the nut first and then the bolt then torque it to 12 foot pounds using a 12 millimeter metric socket just 12 pounds right there you don't need a lot of force at all next thing we're going to prep the in and out the two valves for this so they are sealed, they have O-rings, you don't technically need to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and add some Loctite on both of them just to make sure they don't vibrate loose and that it completely seals it. Again, this is completely optional, not necessary, but I'm going to go ahead and Loctite them. When you thread them onto the catch can itself, as you can see, they go on very smoothly without any resistance. If you have resistance, it means you're cross-threading, stop and make sure everything's fine. At this point, a deep socket 17 millimeter will get it on there for you. As you can see, again, not using a lot of force. That'll hold it in place just fine. You're gonna need a seven millimeter for the hose clamps and you're gonna need a 2.5 millimeter hex for the top three little screws on the catch can itself. We're gonna go ahead and prep these. So we're gonna remove the top three screws. And again, they should come out without, any, without very much resistance at all. Because they do hold the can in place, I'm going to go ahead and place Loctite on all three of them, getting them prepped. Once you place the catch can into the bracket, you can see there's a little bit of movement, a little bit of play where you can adjust it. I'm going to set these centered, get all three of them going. Once you get them on there, you don't want to necessarily torque it all the way down right away. You want to bottom all three out. And here's all you need, as you can see. It's an eighth to a sixteenth of a turn once they are bottomed out. Again, right there, it's bottomed out. And that's all you need. You do not need to torque these down going very hard. You're gonna strip the threads and ruin the entire the entire item here. Next thing we're gonna be re removing the PCV hose on the bottom end where it connects to the PCV valve. You just pull on it. On the top end you just use a pry tool and you should be able to get the hose off no problem just like this. That's what the hose looks like when you get it out. Go ahead and wipe everything off. There will be a little bit of oil. So for the feed side where it's gonna go into your catch can. You're gonna see that right here, that's the hose, that's the orientation for the outlet where it goes into your intake manifold. That's the side right there and that's how it's gonna go. So for the small hose first, we're gonna place the hose clamp on it just right there in that orientation. It allows you to tighten everything, no problem. And on the catch can side, you're gonna place it with the barrel towards the inside just for symmetry, you'll see later. It just looks nicer this way. When you tighten it, you don't need to go very hard, just nice and snug and you're good. On the feed side or the inlet side, this is the orientation the hose goes. On the bottom end, you're gonna place the hose clamp in this orientation. That way you know once you place it on there, you'll be able to get everything tight. That's the orientation right there. For the top end, we're gonna place the barrels facing each other. Just for symmetry, it looks better this way. You can place it however you want, just personal preference. It doesn't matter. It's not gonna change performance or anything. Bend those top end of the little clamps back down, make everything smooth. Top end's done. Now once that's done, on the bottom end, I'm gonna to try to get a camera angle in here for you. That's pretty much how you're gonna tighten it right there without any extensions, seven millimeters. Once that's it, you're all done. Everything's set to go. You pop the engine cover back on and you're all done. 
Let's pull off the catch can itself. This is how you're going to service it. You simply unscrew it, dump everything out, and screw it back on. Now they're all done. Everything's installed. If you like videos like this, consider subscribing. I'm going to leave a link down below if you want to purchase this for yourself. I hope you learned something today, and have a nice day.